videos to help uh, AS90935 um, graph drawing. So we've got a, <coughs> a graph that we need to draw from an experiment we carried out. It's the one where we bounce a, a ball and we consider the height that we drop it from and we measure the rebound height. So I've <coughs> got our chart here, our table, our da first data table with our independent variable here which is our drop height. That's the variable that we've changed and we've got our seven readings here. And then over here we've conducted the experiment and we've got our rebound, re rebound heights. This is our dependent variable. All of this part of the table is our dependent variable. So independent variable, our drop height. Dependent variable, the rebound height. So when we draw our graph, we're going to have <coughs> our independent variable along this axis, the height we've dropped the ball from. And on the y-axis, we're going to have our dependent variable, the rebound height. So uh, first thing first, we're going to use a pencil. Always use a pencil. Have your rubber at hand, your pencil sharpener at hand, and you'll want to use a, a clear ruler. So first thing, uh, our axes, we're going to draw on these bold blue lines. You see every fifth line is bold. And we're going to draw it on the bold line nearest the bottom edge. So here is our x-axis, which is going to be the independent variable. And our dependent variable on the y-axis. Again, we're going to draw on the bold blue line nearest the edge of this page. And I like to put arrows on the end of these to show w w the direction of the increasing value. So I've got that there. And right at the top here, we're going to have a title. And the title is going to be Y versus X. That's the dependent variable versus the independent variable. In our case, it's going to be rebound height. That's our dependent variable. Rebound height versus drop height. And the reason for this is our graph is actually what is the relationship between the rebound height and the drop height? We're looking for what is an equation which ties the rebound height H and our drop height B. So we have a title and next we label our axes and we label it with three things, three things along the X axis, the independent variable is drop height, drop height, in our case is going to be B, and the units are meters. We never use centimeters, we'll use meters. Um, so there's, we, we don't have any prefix in front of this. So three things the name of the variable, the symbol for the variable, and the units. And the same then on the dependent variable, we're going to have re rebound height, and the symbol for that is H, and the units are again meters. So that's where we've started from. Now we put our points in, and the points we put in using a cross little crosses, not dots. Uh, and we do that because later on when we draw our line of best fit, we don't always get it right first time, but we'll have to erase it. And if we have it on dots, it's possible that our, as we draw our line, the dot disappears. So we're going to use crosses. And let's um, plot our points. Uh, drop height, oh, sorry. Let's put our scales on before we do that. 
for our scales, we've got to we see that these blue bold blue lines are spaced five units apart. So when we put our scale on, we need to use fives and tens and not odd values of set perhaps three and I've seen four, I've seen seven, and it complicates identifying the exact point that we need to um, use. So for my independent variable, it varies from 0.1 meters up to 1.4 meters. So I could have 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, 1 1.2, 1 1.4, so that will take us from 0. Now, note that we start at 0 and we leave no irregular gaps between 0 and 2. In some subjects, they will have a line break and they'll go from 0 to another value where they'll start counting from, but in physics we never use a line break we always start our graphs from zero up into our maximum value and the same on the dependent variable axis the y axis we're going to start at zero and in our independent our dependent variable we go from zero up to 0.95 so we're going to go 0 0.1 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1. So each of these are in multiples of 10 rather than multiples of 3 or 4 or 7. Now we put our points in using uh, crosses. So we've got 0 0.1. 0 0.1 and 0 0.06, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.6. So we've got a point here, little cross. We've got 0 0.2 and 0 0.13. And we'll put all of the other values in. Put in all of our points, little crosses that looks like uh, pretty much a straight line. There is this one value up here which is clearly an outlier so we're going to ignore that point and later on in the discussion we'll try and explain why we think that point was so far out of our sequence. So we've drawn our points what we need to do now is draw uh, a line of best fit and we should use a clear plastic ruler so we can see the points through the ruler and with our uh, couple of guidance things about drawing a line of best fit is we probably need as many points below the line as above the line that's one thing so if we have it something like this we might have one, two, three, four, five points above. Mm. Maybe so. Let's try this. So with this line, we've extended it from the y-axis. We've got one, two lines above one two three below so probably we could come down a bit so we could erase that one and move it down having drawn a line of best fit now we ignore the points we've used and we're only using the line now what we must do now is find the equation of the line and the way we do that as you recall we're going to use this equation here y equals mx plus c where m is the gradient so we need to draw a section here where we can get the gradient the delta y over delta x in order to do that we find two points on the line far apart which pass through a point where the blue lines cross so we need one point up here and I've got one here at this point 
the line goes through exactly through where those blue lines cross and we need another one down here somewhere and I've got another one here where the line of best fit just goes exactly where those blue lines cross then we draw our section and we've got now we have this length here is delta y and this length here is delta x so our gradient is delta y over delta x and this point here this point is y2 minus y sorry this point is is oh I've made a mistake there this point is x2 y2 and this point is x1 y1 so our gradient is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 so we can read off these values y2 is 1.32 sorry I made a mistake there again gosh <coughs> easily done y2 is this value here 0 0.88 0 0.88 and y1 is this value 0.18 so this length is 0.88 minus 0.18 divided by this length here which is x2 1.32 minus this x value which is 0.28 and that's equal to so that's equal to 0 0.67 the gradient is 0 0.67 and we've got to now include our units and the units will be the whatever is the y value divided by whatever is the x value our y uh, meters so we're going to have meters divided by our units for the the x axis is also meters so we've got 0 0.67 meters divided by meters this will have no units so we're going to have 0 0.67 and now we're also going to look at the y-intercept where the line passes through the y-axis and we can see it goes slightly negative it's zero it's negative 0 0.01 so we've got our gradient M and we've got our Y intercept C so we can write this equation Y is equal to 0 0.67 X plus negative 0 0.01 we're nearly there but of course this is not Y this is the rebound height H so we'll write h is equal to 0 0.67 and this of course isn't x this is the drop height b so it's 0 0.67 b minus 0 0.01 and here is the conclusion of our experiment the conclusion of our experiment is the rebound height dropping our tennis ball is equal to 0 0.67 times the drop height minus this amount here and that's our conclusion so we're finished